This Star Wars Destiny video is sponsored by Face to Face Games Toronto. They're currently running a special promotion for VTTV viewers. If you spend more than $100 on an order of Star Wars Destiny cards, you can choose from one of the three legendary cards displayed on screen right now to include in your order for free. If you spend $200 or more, you will receive all three. Face to Face Games is selling everything from Awakenings and Spirit of Rebellion singles, to Spirit of Rebellion booster boxes, to full Saga sets for both Spirit of Rebellion and Awakenings. Anything you could possibly need to round out your collection. So either email them directly at Toronto at facetofacegames.com or visit stores.ebay.com slash facetofacegamestoronto. Face to Face Games will ship to both the US and Canada. A link to the full details can be found in the video description, and don't forget to tell them which promo you'd like to receive and that VTTV sent you. Thank you for supporting VTTV Live. Hello, and welcome back to round four of the Revenge of the Sixth tournament from Face to Face Games here in Toronto. This took place on uh, May the 6th, uh, hence the name. Um, this is VTTV Live. Uh, I'm Travis. And I'm Victor. And yeah, we got uh, two new players in the stream here. Uh, Chris has been on the stream many times before, but not, not in, from this tournament. And Asif is a, a new player. Um, you want to talk a little bit about their decks? Yeah, sure. So uh, for those of you who have uh, been watching videos on our YouTube channel, uh, a lot of you will be familiar with Chris Tremblay, and he loves playing, at least during Awakenings, he loved playing a deck called Django Trooper Trooper, which was, uh, despite the fact that Django Fett was in it, was a very slow, controlly game that grinded out a lot of money, played a lot of big stuff. Uh, of course, with the release of Spirit of Rebellion now, you see that he's replaced Django Fett with Unkar Plutt, which is a lot better at making money than Django Fett was, and has replaced one of the First Order Stormtroopers with a Death Trooper, which has um, a lot more consistent damage sides. But I also think that because it has one less blank than the regular Stormtrooper, and the fact that because you're playing an elite Uncar Plot, you now have the points to put a right. Death Trooper in, uh, you you can you can proc uh, Uncar Plot's ability more often than if you were playing two Stormtroopers. So on the on the right side of the screen, we have uh, Asif, and uh, Asif and his son uh, are a now a regular staple at a lot of Destiny tournaments in Toronto. They're both actually very good players, despite being new to the community in general. So Asif is playing again a what I think is now the archetypical uh, hero <laughs> mill deck, uh, and we see Chris just played the Salvage Stand there. So Salvage Stand is a support that says whenever you roll a resource. You can exhaust that support to make the opponent lose one resource. So just quickly to uh, to uh, conclude, um, Asif, his his version is different than the version you saw in round two where I was playing this same, same three character mill deck. He's running E Snap instead of E Maz, and his battlefield is Command Center. So now this is uh, Command Center. Of course, is the battlefield that when you claim it, sure. you can discard the top two cards of an opponent's deck. So the reason, uh, so the way this deck plays out, Asif's deck is very different than my version in the sense that it's much more aggressive uh, with two Snap dice. Um, this deck also, I believe, runs fast hands, I think, this version. So you can uh, potentially disrupt the opponent two resources without um, them being able to play anything yeah. if you went first. Yeah, so Snap forces uh, Chris to discard a card. Um, and yeah. Chris has the rifle out on uh, the Death Trooper. starting to get some, uh, some damage there. Looks like four damage. So we also saw that Chris actually played out the Imperial Sus Inspection, which is a... Uh, a very hotly anticipated card for the villain side. Uh, the support is whenever you roll a disrupt side on one of your dice, you can exhaust that support to return a upgrade on the opponent's side that costs two or less back to their hand. And uh, this deck actually has a lot of disrupt. Of course, the Death Trooper has a disrupt side. Uncar Plutt has disrupt sides as well. Um, this is a very, um, as you can see here, it's a it's a money choke deck. And <laughs> you know, East, uh, Snap Wexley can give a lot of uh, decks grief when they try to clean the battlefield. Uh, may have a harder time doing so against Chris's deck here, right. I think. So, uses Maz's ability to uh, resolve the focus into a resource off the Maz die. 
And now Chris has all his dice in the pool. That looks like a friends in low places. Uh, the only card left in Chris's hand was an electroshock that gets discarded because it costs one or less. Yeah. Uh, Chris uses his on card dice to focus uh, the stormtrooper, so showing six damage there on those three dice. And Asif plays out a, th- a three PO. And uh, 3PO, what's the text on 3PO? Okay. So C3PO is, uh, as an action, you can remove the C3PO die to resolve one of your other dice as though it were showing any other symbol and it keeps the same value. So if you have a 2 disrupt, it now becomes a 2 discard, which is probably what you would want to do in this deck. Or, you know, uh, 2 uh, focus into a 2 resource right. if you're trying to make more money. So that being said, Asif rolls out uh, 1 discard for C3PO. And I... Uh, I think he so he he changed he, that he, he discarded it resource. he discarded it to use the um what to use the snap dice for a resource yeah so he can was, play out just so he can get the snap yeah. the uh the spinet out so spinet I think it's a it's a deck that helps speed up the uh yeah it helps it helps speed up the the hero mill deck now um yeah because when, whenever you roll in a, yeah. a focus you can exhaust it to mill a card from the top of a opponent's desk but force them to discard a card from the top of their yeah. deck. Asif rolling out snap first, which is always a good idea, because if you get that two disrupt side, you force the opponent to do something. Uh, looks like a one disrupt and a blank. Of course, uh, having at least one blank slide on snap is not always a bad thing, because as mm-hmm. long as the die is in the pool, it has an effect. Now, uh, Chris decided to focus on Maz first, which I think is a bit of a mistake, because... Uh, Snap is the only character in Asif's, Asif's deck that uh, can't have second chance put on him. I, I don't think he... I, I think people aren't quite used to playing this deck yet, so they're not realizing what their target should be. Right. Uh, also, uh, while you're talking, Chris played out training on the Death Trooper. De- uh, training allows you to make a, a character unique, so put another... Or unique. Elite. Mm-hmm. So he had, basically has another uh, Death Trooper die, die on him. And then I uh, played another salvage stand as well. So a lot of money control on Chris's side now. Uh, I haven't seen Chris use Uncar Plut's ability yet, I don't think. No, we had all this damage out. Yeah. He didn't want to sacrifice those damage die uh, just to start trying to take a shot at those resources. So there's uh, Maz rolling out. Now through Maz's ability, it resolves a discard. There goes a doubt. From Chris's hand there. Uh, so I think he, he chose only to resolve the one die side there. Um, I'm not sure. I think he's maybe considering his options yeah. before he confirms here. He might want to save the, the other Maz die to use through C3PO, perhaps. So this is a disrupt here for for Unkar. Yeah, so disrupt of two. Uh, uh, looks like a discard to reroll yeah. here. Uh yeah, <laughs> knocking over Chris's dice. It's all right. He didn't roll that die out yet. So looks like a. a I think it's a. Looks like a one ranged and one resource, one Chris, focus and a blank. Yeah, Chris is playing his uh, characters very aggressively over yeah. into the middle of the table, <laughs> trying to intimidate. I think. So this is a focus into. Uh, what are you going to do there? Maybe maybe a two disrupt or no? He already used the another or discard. Just another discard. Couldn't he have just yeah, used I, the superior three PO ability to resolve that immediately? Well, he does have a commando ring. Um, now he needs the money to to activate it, yeah. so that's why he's taking the money here. But you couldn't do that through C three PO. You fair. would have that's to fair. play the event itself. So, so unfortunately, he forgot yeah. the uncar disrupt uh, deck. <laughs> so die just, that was out. Yeah, he's just gonna have to settle for one discard, and then this is a discarding endless ranks for Chris to reroll. Uh, and I did say that generally he plays it as a very slow control deck, yeah. but obviously because the mill deck, uh, you know, it wants the long game. Right. Uh, you're trying to end this this game a lot quicker than that. So we've got the the special dice showing on the rifle, which is basically deal two damage divided amongst his characters any way he chooses. So basically, not on Naz. And then Chris might want to remove the two ranged, perhaps, to take some money. Well, he doesn't have any... Chris doesn't have any resources, I don't think. Yeah, so that he's going to use Uncle yeah. Plus ability, discarding an Electroshock. That's a good pull. Gets one resource, and now is going to force Asif to deal two damage to one sure. of his characters. So how, how does Uncle Plus ability work exactly? So as an action, you can remove uh, any number of dice totaling three or more 
to make the opponent discard a card at random from their hand, and then you gain resources equal to the value of that discard. And you can repeat this action as many times as you want. Uh, so it, it is an ability, especially if you have a lot of dice with maybe a lot of like big modifiers that you know you're not able to use that turn, or if you simply just want to money up, you can use that action multiple times. Right. Really a great way to deal with um, modified dice, modifier dice. Uh, you, you maybe couldn't play, but those high values can still be quite useful. Absolutely. So uh, he plays friends in low places, uh, Looks uh, finds a he doesn't like you, another great control card, and that's a good pull. Uh, of course, we saw a prize possession actually lurking in Chris's hand. Uh, just needs one more resource to play it out. I think that's why he he's trying to money up a bit. Well, um, he also he didn't have the money to spend on yeah. that damage dice, so sacrificing one range damage to get the resources is a, is a good trade. So here's Death Trooper with another high damage roll. Uh, looks like a Rebel's being played because a discard side is showing. And I think that's a... Yeah, it's a Commando Raid, I think. Yeah, so Asif's telling him you can keep that one card, discard these other two. And I don't know, I think Asif forgot to draw a card off the Commando Raid. Uh, not sure if he drew a card there or not. But yes, indeed, you do have to draw a card, or that's what the card tells you to yeah. do anyway. <laughs> and one of the things that he maybe may Chris may have been thinking targeting a um, one of the yellow characters off the bat was trying to get a second chance so quickly onto one of those characters would be such a disruption to his economy that he may not be willing to do it early in the game. So if he could burn it down quickly enough, for sure. So uh, yeah, Maz is dead. Maz is down now. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Chris really cares that much about Snap Wexley because his deck can generate so much money. But, uh, and I don't think uh, Asif has gone to work much on his deck either. I didn't, I didn't see him roll a lot of focuses. Uh, now that Maz is down too, that's uh, a bunch of focus sides that right. he, he forgot doesn't to use have his for spine, spine didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, not having much resources is, is, is causing a bit of a yeah, problem. Yeah, the the choke is real here on uh, Chris's side, and he really he really can't afford to play any any of those upgrades because the Imperial inspection inspection is just going to bounce it right back. So Chris just takes the last resource, plays it on the hunt. Another great control there. Control uh, yep. card. It's not going to do very much. It's not really going to be a lot of shields, probably, to deal with. But it's still going to allow him to pay the resource to remove the die. All right. So I was mistaken. Actually, there's been quite a few cards milled off uh, milled off Chris's deck. I think he only has like one or two cards left in, left in his deck. Oh, really? Yeah. See, we were. I, I thought the Yoshi sleeve was actually his deck, but I think it's off off camera, so I can't tell exactly how many cards have been milled out. So everything I said before, uh, completely ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, it looks like Asus in great shape here. He just needs to finish off the last couple of cards in Chris's deck. Of course, uh, he then has to survive the Death Trooper onslaught. The other question is that Chris has play, played out all of his cards. Yeah. He's usually gone through his hand, which may not be the best strategy when you're facing such an aggressive build. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think Asif's been playing this smart, too. I mean, with with the Imperial Inspection lurking on the table there, he's elected not to play any upgrades on any of his characters, uh, just using the power of Spynet, C-3PO, <laughs> uh, Padme Special. There's a, there's a Salvage Shine. <laughs> so he rolled one yeah. uh, resource, and that means he gets to use the Salvage Shine twice. Getting rid of two resources on Asif's side. Crazy. So this was a He Doesn't Like You or Loth Cat and Mouse? I can't remember. Yeah, it was Loth Cat. So Uncar rolling out here. Um, now, C3PO so, so he, rolls he a gets, focus. He does get the middle of the And spine. actually, I think that was the last card in Chris's deck there. I'm um, pretty certain. So. Um, Chris just has four cards to work with. I mean, it, it could be enough if maybe he he takes out uh, Padme. Because well, right now, Asif's just got to work on... You, you also saw the p prize possession deck. So yes. he could potentially lock out the Padme dice, making it much different, more difficult to get now, those. Now, I do believe that on an earlier turn, he actually had discarded the prize possession. 
So I don't think he has it in his hand right now. Okay. Yeah, so this is a discard to reroll. I think uh, Chris realizes that if he, he can't just wait, he's got to end things as quickly as possible. Um, I do see a second chance in Asif's hand, which is safe from Imperial inspection. But it's unlikely that he'll ever get three resources. Yeah. This is a discard. Asif's discarding ammo belts to reroll. Uh, not that useful, that range damage there. No, it's just trying to hit the, the discard side. Yeah. Oh, uh, big swing through on Padme, who's now sitting at six damage. Now, Sna uh, Snap does have two discard sides. So even if Padme goes down here, I think uh, it's still not over. Snap's able to take it home. So he uses the special on the rifle, and uh, which he puts both damage onto Snap. Mm -hmm. So not sure who claimed the battlefield first. I think it was Asif. I got to assume it's Asif. I, I would hope that it changed the channel. So that, that, that battlefield claiming that Asif's been yeah. able to do has been where a lot of those discards have come on Chris's side. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, this match, uh, this is very different from my version I was playing. So this is a much more turbo mill. And as you can see, it doesn't require a lot of upgrades on characters to get that mill out. The, uh, the command center uh, battlefield claiming with Snap is huge. So Chris has just the two cards left in yeah. his hand. And uh, there's a discard side rolled by Snap. Huge, huge play there. So um, it's it's good, but there's a very real chance that Chris can roll out enough damage here to kill both of them. So he he needs uh, at this point he needs eight damage, I guess, which is which is probably on the outside of what uh, eight's not unreasonable. Yeah, but he only has like one one chance to do it. So he can't, he can't, he can only discard one card, and then when he does that, that's it. And then C three PO just rolled a discard, so Chris is going to have to to Wait. discard to reroll now. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, he's going to lose that last card, and that's what he's going to do, I think. Yep. So there, there's a discard to reroll. Nope. Leave that damage. Don't do it. You no, can't no. get a better result there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So it doesn't matter who he kills first. It's just yep. raw damage now. Absolutely. Oh, Chris. Uh, he does get, oh, okay, so he, he maybe he was trying to get a resource side to maybe ensure that there was no chance he would get the second chance onto Padme. That's true. So uh, he's safe from that at least, but now he has to, and Uncar Plot really can't deal any damage here, so that looks like one, two, three, four damage, which is quite not quite enough here to finish off. Sorry, right. six, including the Stormtrooper. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one, actually, Uncar Plutt rolled a plus one range. So that's plus one range and a fo range. focus yeah, a bit more damage. And a so. focus, jeez. So we need some dice mitigation here, or uh, Asif. I don't know if he's going to make it out of the round alive. I see a I see a flank, but of course every the character has been activated, so uh, that's off the table there. Uh, uh, I don't see anything in his hand that he can do. Yeah, here. Um, So, one, two, three. So, I, maybe C-3PO could put a Six shield damage, on. No. Eight damage. Yeah. I don't think so. So, Snap has five. said eight damage. Five plus six. There's eight showing, right? Yeah. No, six showing, then eight with a focus. No, that's right. Oh, this TV is too blurry. <laughs> uh, well, suffice to say, I mean, uh, this is very tense. I think if... Uh, if the damage sides are showing what I think are showing, I think Chris has this one. I'm not sure if uh, C-3PO's die resolving... I can't tell if it's rolled out or if it's back It in. is it's rolled out. It has a discard. Yeah. We, we rolled so, it and so maybe if C-3PO tried to change that plus one resource into a shield, that might have changed things. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Not not uh, not with a focus from Ankar. Yeah. So that's another two damage. So focus here to a two for one and i think that's all going on padme perhaps no no he's gonna split it he's gonna kill both so let's see padme needs three damage so she's four four sorry yes she's sitting at six that's a four so four kills padme and then there's five to deal yeah. to uh, so it looks like that was exacties yeah. exact exact sees and mm, five, five to also that was wow. a Really tight game. Um, 
And yeah, if he, he if he had resolved the uh, shield in, it would have been a difference, right? Yeah. That one, that one oh, shield right. would have yes. let him survive. So yeah, uh, again, I think we can just chalk that up to, you know, sometimes you get tunnel vision. C-3PO is always either using it as a mill or whatever. Right. So sometimes you don't see that play on the table uh, where they're, that could yep. have saved you there. And, and we haven't been mentioning this at the end of the video, but we've been uh, making sure to ask our players if they're willing to share their deck list. And we definitely have Asus deck list. Um, Chris hasn't uh, passed it on to us yet, but I'm pretty confident we'll have it by the time this video goes live. So just check out uh, those links uh, in the in the description of the video. Yeah. Wow, brain fart. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's the end of round four. We'll see you in round five. Don't forget to check out the Face to Face Games Legendary Madness promotion. Find the full details in the video description.